All right. So in this video, we said we are going to look at um, how do we estimate the coefficients. So estimating the coefficients, right? How do we go about doing that? This is going to, be, if it becomes too technical, uh, just take take your time. It, 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 it is uh, easy to understand. So what is going to happen is, in practice, beta naught and beta one, like we said, the actual beta naught and beta one are not known, are unknown, right? But we will, we are just going to estimate them. We are going to estimate them before we can do predictions. Because now when you estimate them, we'll put them in the equation, then we can do our predictions, right? So what we're going to do is, we're going to let x1, y1, or the way up to xn, yn, represent n of n observations so here we have n observations n observations each of which consists of a measurement of x and a measurement of y so here we have, we have our n observations that we have we have uh, that we have, we have made right we have made that n observations whether this is going to be age person's income age person's income age person's income age person's income whatever it's going to be right so in our example we are using the advertising data right so the this data consists of tv budget advertising budget tv advertising budget and uh product sales isn't it so yeah it's going to be what is the x is going to be the tv budget and then what were the sales there x2 will be tv budget sales tv budget sales yeah, XM, TV budget, and uh, sales for that nth observation. In our data, our N is equal to 200 observations. When I say in our data, um, I'll, I'll, I'll link to that data in the, in, the, in, the, in the description of the video. Like if you go to the resources section of this video, you, sh you should be able to see the data that I'm talking about. So the goal is to obtain beta naught and beta 1 as estimates uh, such that the linear model fits the available data very well. That is our goal, right? So what we are trying to do is we are trying to come up with beta naught and beta 1 such that it's something like this. Right? For So let me say yi xi for i equal to 1 up to m. So what this math mathematically, this is what we're trying to do. And in English terms, we just want to come up with beta naught beta 1, such that there's, for each for each income, we can relate, or not income, for each product sales, sales level, we have an xi. Or for each TV advertising budget, we have a sales figure that is here, yeah, that, that, that is connected to it. So we want to come up with beta 1 and beta that will allow us to predict the to predict this let's say y1 accurately when we put our x1 instead of xi like this if we put our x1 here we want this beta beta not and beta 1 to allow it to be accurate enough to give us a y y1 that is close to the one that we have in our training data that's basically what we're trying to do right um and by doing that since the yeah, you know that this is a, uh, an equation of a straight line so we are trying to find beta naught and beta, uh, beta 1 such that the resulting line is as close as possible to the n equal to 200 data points so wherever the points are the line that we are going to draw from from this estimate it needs to be close to all the points it needs to be the closest line to all those points so what we are going to do is um let y i no not the yeah equal to beta naught plus beta one x i so it's going to be b the prediction for so this is a prediction prediction for y based on based on the um ith value of x Basically, here yeah, we're saying let this be the TV sales for the ith for the ith value value of x. Or if you, if you re read the documentation of the data that we're doing here, it's these are n n equal to two hundred uh, countries, I think, 
these are 200 countries so it was the the product sales in 20 countries so this is going to be the country number i so in country number i we are doing tv advertising like this like xi and yi is going to be the associated product sales in that particular country cool then we are going to define something called ei ei basically is equal to yi minus y hat i like this what does this mean what, what this basically means is there is going to be an error they are the actual sales and what we have predicted you remember our um, training data set is composed of yi is like this for i equal to one up to n that's our that's our training data right so we have an, we have the actual sales and the tv budget but here we are going to predict we are going to put our tv budget here calculate our beta whatever it is and then predict we predict the sales to be like this but there's going to be a difference between the actual and what we have predicted and this is what we are calculating here all right so ei is going to represent the ith residual it's called the residual ith residual uh, which is the difference between the ith observed observed response value response value which is the actual which is yi minus um and the ith response value that is predicted that is predicted by our linear model right let's say let, let's say the actual actual sales that we that we had here we had uh when we put 50 rand on tv advertising we are going to get 2000 sales cool that's what that let's say that's what we have in our training data but now when we train our model we train our model and we figure out we, we find out that y is predicted by uh let's say 1000 plus that is going to be a beta naught plus uh 20 uh, plus 2 plus 2 x beta 1 is going to be 2 let's say we've trained our model that's what we found so what we're doing here is to say let's put our 50 rand here for us to calculate the residual let's put our 50 rand here so it's going to be 1000 plus 2 times 50 rand which is equal to 1000 plus 100 which is equal to 1100 so what is the residual the residual is the actual that we had in our training data which is 2000 and the one that we predicted for this 50 rand we said you are going to do 1100 sales so the residual here is 900 the difference between the two right the actual minus the minus the the one that i predicted that's basically the residual so which means each observation will have its own residual right for the first observation there is the pre, there is the actual the first actual minus the predicted uh, minus the first predicted we have the residual number one so we have residual number one number two number three number four all the way up to residual number 200 which is just the actual for the 200 minus the predicted for the 200 that's basically it right so since each one of them have their own residuals we are going to define something called the residual sum of squares residual sum of squares rss very very important in um, linear linear regression rss and our rss is just basically equal to the first residual squared plus the second residual squared plus the third residual squared plus all the way up to the last one plus en squared our case e, e our n is 200 so it's going to be e 200 squared so we're going to do the residuals for each for each observation this is going to be our our rss and if you want to write it um in an uglier form but uh, the one that makes sense instead of writing e e1 how do you calculate e1 again we say y1 minus the predicted for y1 right y1 which is given by what beta naught plus beta 1 x1 right so here we're going to say minus beta naught minus uh beta 1 x1 minus beta 1 x1 squared plus for the second one y2 minus beta naught minus beta 1 x2 that is the second second residual plus all the way up to 
y n minus beta naught minus beta one x n o squared, right? That's the other. That's another way of writing it. I think it makes sense because this part here, just this part here, this part is equal to the y hat one. This part here is equal to y hat two. So it's just basically y two minus y hat. This one is going to be y n minus y y hat n, where this is the y uh, y y hat n. I think that makes the I think that that um mathematics there makes sense, isn't it? So now, um, when we are how so how do we get these beta nodes and beta ones? In the simplest way, the simplest way is a method called uh, least squares. A method called least squares. This method allows us to get um, the, the estimates for beta naught and beta 1. List squares, it chooses beta naught and beta 1 to minimize this RISS. We just want to minimize RISS. So this squares chooses beta naught and beta 1 that minimize that minimize the RSS. And it makes sense. Our RSS is basically the summation of the errors. So we want the errors to be to be minimal. We want them to be very, very small. The errors being how far our prediction was from the actual. So we want that distance from the actual to our prediction to be very small. That's why we are minimizing. And so our least square is going, is going to choose the beta naught and the beta one that minimize that error, that distance between actual, between actual and our prediction, which is our RISS, right? Because our RISS is composed of those residuals here, right? I think that makes sense. So, how does it do that? If you want, you can do this. Um, you can do the, a bit of calculus here, but I'm just going to write the equations. It does that when you when you do. Minimizing in calculus, you can do differentiation. You can differentiate this uh, and try to calculate the beta nodes and the beta one. But what you are going to end up with is your beta naught is going to be given. The estimate is going to be given by this y bar minus beta one x bar, and your beta one the est is going to be given by summation of i equal to one to n of x i minus x bar y i minus y bar all divided by summation i equal to one up to n of um, x i minus x bar squared so these these these, these are equations uh, if you watched my introductory video i did say there's some equations i'm going to write and you just have to take them at face value without me having to prove them because i i'll spend time trying to differentiate this and then trying to solve for beta naught and it will just waste time but this is what my beta naught the value of my beta naught that minimizes the s the rss and this is the value of my beta one that minimizes the RSS, which means this beta one here, this beta one. Once I calculate my beta one, I'll take it and I'll put it there, and then I'll calculate my beta naught. That's basically what it is. And the y bar is defined uh, is defined as one as one over n summation of i equal to one up to n of each y i, and then my x bar is just going to be one over n summation of i equal to one x i so these are these are called sample mean they are just the means the sample mean means what, what that basically means is add up add up all the x's and just get the average of all the x's so if we have ages let's say our uh, remember our training data is going to be like this right x i y i for, for i for i between one and n right so what this basically means is just add up all the x's and divide by n what this first part means is just add up all the y i's and y i's yeah and divide by m so if if this was tv cells add up all the tv cells in the 200 countries and divide by 200 you get you get your x bar for y bar 
is basically saying add up all the sales the sales in the um, 200 countries and divide by 200 you get your y bar and those are the figures that you put in there and your x bar that's the figure that you put in there and yes it's just saying sum up the difference between for each for each for each country for each country the tv advertising budget minus the mean for all countries yeah the sales for that particular country minus the mean for all countries that's basically what it's saying yeah when you do that you get your beta one and you're summing up you're summing up everything you get your beta one when you do the division you put the beta one there that's basically the equation right there quite complicated but it's not really very complicated especially when you're using software like r when you're using software like r it will do the automatic the calculation uh in the background we'll see that when we're doing a lab that's going to be at the end right at the end of this chapter for now we're just looking at the principles behind behind that right um so right now that is that is what that is what uh that is what this 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 part is saying so we now know how to get our beta beta um our betas right so basically what it's saying is in our advertising data let's try to draw a graph so in our advertising data what, what was all that mathematics trying to tell us let's say our advertising data this is going to be our tv budget on the x-axis and this is going to be maybe our sales so this is going to be our sales on the y-axis so let's say for for this level uh, TV budget with these many cells and this level of TV budget. Let's say with these many cells So I'm just going to plot my cells versus uh, TV budget, right? Let's say it's like this Sales versus TV budget. That's uh, that's the way it is like right cool so now when we calculate our beta naught and uh, My beta one estimate like that it allows us to have a graph that is like this or an equation that is like this right and we say this is a straight line if it's a straight line we can in we can we can plot it what is this this is the intercept and what is this this is the slope cool so we can draw the graph itself so what we can do now is to it will come out like something like this so now this is my predicted my prediction line which is equal to beta naught plus beta one x like that right using the predict the estimates that we got there perfect but now let me describe something that i um, didn't describe can you see all oh, these other points are far uh, are a bit of a distance from what from this predicted green line so like this point here it is this distance from the green line this point is this distance from the green line this point this distance so each point here we have some distance from our predicted line our prediction line like that right and these distances are the ease or the residuals so for this point it will be where it is exactly the y it is and what the the prediction line is saying so this distance is going to be the e for that point this is going to be the e for that point e for that point e for that point e for that point so basically this green line is trying to minimize the ease for everyone so it's trying to minimize the ease for everyone when it finds those beta nodes and beta ones that minimize this the, the distance for everyone at once for everyone at once it, it uh, minimized the what that is the the rss and by minimizing that the, the ease it means it is the closest line to all the points all the points at once It's the closest line to all of them when you take the all all of them at once not not a singular point like just a one point but when you take all of them at once it minimizes all the ease it gets the beta notes that minimize all the ease You're like this is the best line for everyone that is the best line to make everyone happy cool so that is that is the, the, the those are our ease right so in our advertising data, in our advertising data, our beta naught is going to be equal to 7.03 and our beta 1 is going to be equal to 0 0.0475. So we can write that as, so our equation can be written as sales 
can be approximated by 7.03 for beta naught plus 0.0475 for beta 1 uh, times TV budget. So this is our equation. And in R, these are split. These are spit out. They are spit out. R does the heavy lifting of calculating, calculating those means and everything. And then it just spits out that beta one is this, beta naught is that, and you put that in the equation. Cool. So what? How do you interpret this equation, this sales equation? What it basically means is, um, imagine, imagine our TV. We are, we are not even advertising on TV at all, at all. We're not advertising on TV at all. It means our TV budget is zero, right? What happens to our sales? So therefore, our sales will be approximately 7.03 plus 0 0.0475 TV, which is zero. So our sales will probably will be 7.03. Um, and if you look at the units, units of sales in our, in our data is thousands. They are in thousands. So which means... Even without um, advertising, advertising on TV, what this means is we are going to sell 703 units. We are going to sell, uh, let's see, one, two. So we are going to say sell seven, seven thousand and thirty units. Those are the ones that we are going to sell, right? Cool. What about now when we have a TV budget? Let's say we have increased our TV budget by 1,000 Rand. If we had zero, we would have sold this much. What about when we increase our TV budget by 1,000 Rand? Our TV budget is now 1,000. We have added 1,000 Rand. What does, the, what, what does this, this equation mean? It means now our sales are going to be approximately 7.03 plus 0 0.4, 0.4475 times 1,000. And when you when you look at the new one, because you want to know the change in sales, right? Change in sales is going to be the new sales. These ones are calculated minus the old sales. What you're going to see is you are going to sell 47.5 more units by increasing your budget by, by 1,000 Rand. And you can see it by uh, through here. That is the slope. The slope gives you the additional change per unit, per unit, per unit increase, per unit increase in, in the X, which is here in this case in TV. So each, each unit increase in TV budget increases our sales by 0 0.0475. So if we increase our TV budget by 1,000, we are just going to increase our sales by 1,000 times 0. 0.0475 which is equal to 47.5 units right so if we increase our tv budget by 10,000 dollars that's going to be 10,000 times 0 0.075 so that is what that is what um that is what it is that is the that is the thing that is the interpretation of that equation one last part in this video before we leave before we move on to the next one um, we talked about rss Right, we talked about RSS. What you can actually do is you can plot a contour graph. Uh, I think you spell it like that. Yeah, you can plot a contour graph, and a contour graph basically it connects values. Uh, it connects. It, it draws circles around um areas that, that have equal value here we want to plot our R, our rss versus beta naught and beta one so for each combination of beta naught and beta one that we that that we what that we can get from our data let's plot the rss so looking for, because now this is going to be rss versus beta naught it's going to be a 3d graph it's going to be a 3d graph because we're saying something it's, it's something like z is equal to uh, some function of function of x and y. So here our RSS is a function. Our RSS is a function of beta naught and beta one. So it's going to be a three D graph, right? But let's see. Let's pretend we are looking at it from the top part, like an area of view. So which means we are going to get circles, concentric, not concentric sometimes, but we are going to get circles. 
that connect that connect values so yeah let's say this on my on this axis is beta naught and this is going to be beta one what this basically means is beta naught for this value of beta naught and this value of beta one these these two these two here they have the same rss as this value of beta naught and this value of of beta one so a contour connect connects all points that we have that we have the same value so it means the as long as you are on this circle here you have the same rss value so it means these these are all the combinations of beta naught and beta one that give you the same rss there is going to be another circle that gives you another rss so this rss could be 3.0 this rss could be an rss of 2.5 so it means every every combination of of beta naught and beta one uh, that are drawing this circle we have the same rss this circle also same rss this circle also same rss what you are going to find is at them like in the middle in the middle here in the middle here right in the middle there's going to be a value of beta naught and a value of beta one and there that's where you get the minimum the minimum rss so at the at the middle here this is the minimum minimum rss that combination of beta one and beta naught and as you move out your rss increases rss increases this is a 3d graph so i can't really draw a 3d a 3d but it will be something like this it will be something like if i can draw some like a 3d it will be like a dish it will be like a dish and at the bottom of the dish that's where that's where you have your minimum rss and in the sides here at the, at, at a level you have a particular rss which is maybe the circle outside here and then another at a level in the dish same rss beta one beta naught and then at the at the bottom of the table uh, at the bottom of the dish that's where you have the minimum r r s s that was a lot to discuss right now a lot to discuss but this is how we figure out our 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 coefficients right like we said we just want to minimize our rss find the beta naught and beta one that minimize our rss well, and our RSS is just going to be is the residual sum of squares, which is e1 squared plus e2 squared plus, which are our our residuals that we discussed here. That we discussed here, our residuals. When we find those beta nodes and beta one, because inside inside this is we have functions of beta one and beta node. If you remember when we expand, expanded out this this equation, we had the function of beta node and beta one and the y's, right? So if you find those beta nodes and beta one that minimize this RSS, those two or those two are the ones that we put in our equation. Are the ones that we put in our equation, right? Cool. So now that we have found our beta node and beta one, we want to know how accurate they are. Are they even accurate or not? And we're going to discuss that in the next video.